Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, there is no excuse for Governor Walls to continue the peacetime emergency except simply to maintain the total power that he seems to enjoy so much. I ask everyone to simply look at the facts. When this pandemic first materialized, the governor declared a peacetime emergency declaration. That was in March. Governor Walls originally stated that he declared the peacetime emergency because swift action was needed in order to respond to the pandemic. And it would only be for two weeks. Nevertheless, the governor has now extended his peacetime emergency order into its fifth month. Clearly, the governor misled us. He didn't declare an emergency just to take immediate action. He declared an emergency to give himself months of unquestionable, unbridled power. Most egregious, Governor Walz has used a peacetime emergency declaration to usurp the role of this legislature. Complete powers of a branch of government to which he has no claim. The executive or the legislative branch. Such actions are nothing short of tyrannical. Still, when the peacetime emergency was declared in March, Governor Walz and his administration began discussing statistical models related to COVID-19 deaths in the state of Minnesota. In April, the governor's administration pushed one model, which he claimed that the state could see 22,000 deaths in six months, even with a stay-at-home order in place. The month before, he had said it was 74,000 deaths and 55,000 if a stay-at-home order was in place. Then in May, the governor's model said there would be 29,000 deaths in 12 months. As of today, July 14th, there have been 1,542 deaths related to COVID-19. Not 74,000, not 55,000, not 29,000, and not 22,000. Members, Madam Speaker, make no mistake, every one of these deaths represents a tragic loss for families, friends, and the entire state of Minnesota. However, we need to deal with this pandemic in a serious and measured way. The Walsh administration has done none of that. The Walsh administration spent $6.9 million to purchase a building in St. Paul and convert it into a morgue for the use during the pandemic. The governor told us this state-run morgue would be necessary to combat the surge in Minnesota COVID-19 deaths. What surge? Members, there never was a surge. Like the rest of the lack of science that the governor used to push us into these powers that he now hangs on to. COVID-19 deaths have dropped from 696 deaths in May to 402 deaths in June. On May 28th, Minnesota experienced 35 COVID-19 deaths in one day. Yesterday, there were two. COVID-19 death rates are dropping in Minnesota, even as Governor Walz's unconstitutional stay-at-home order has ended yet once again. And he claimed to be, be holding the mantle of science, 74,000 deaths, based on a mysterious fake model that we have never seen the inside of. In early, April, in early April, he said, we can say with 95% confidence that we are going to need a minimum of 3,000 beds, he meant ICU beds, starting in the middle of May. 95% confidence he was out of the fake model that he was peddling to us. Members in the middle of May the ICU bed capacity was between 200 and 250 beds, not 3,000. 
that his 95% confidence from his fake model delivered to us. And I sit and listen here, and I listen to some of the Democrat representatives, and thank you, uh, Representative Garofalo, for reiterating some of the same points that I did twice on this same floor over the last three months. And the relative position of those states around us in dealing with COVID-19 continues to be extremely better than we are doing here in the state of Minnesota. With the full lockdown that the governor brought and the remnants of the lockdown that he still won't let go of. So while that failing approach made us perform worse, the other states around us are doing much better. I don't understand it. The governor's approach is failing, and we have Democrat representatives here in the Minnesota House of Representatives who don't want to retain and bring back their power to write laws in this area. They're willing to relegate it to a guy who's failing. Now, members, we all have election certificates. Democrats, I wonder what you're doing with yours. Are you ashamed of it? You don't want to do the things you told the people in your districts you would do when you got elected to come to this place. You would come to a, represent them to form the laws of this state going forward. The governor is doing that today on your behalf, and you're just fine letting them continue. Do your constituents know what you're doing? The, the Democrats have always accused Republicans of practicing the politics of fear, but Governor Walz's unnecessary purchasing of a morgue wins the prize for fear peddling in Minnesota politics. Despite Governor Walz's mildly, wildly misguided response to this pandemic, he is now considering forcing every Minnesotan to wear masks. This step would certainly be yet another unconstitutional power grab. However, Governor Walz's own record shows that he has no problem with such an infringement on the rights of Minnesotans. He's been doing it for the last four months. The governor has no mandate to continue his peacetime emergency order. Every excuse he has offered for its renewal has fallen flat. Every one of them, and the fake models included. As such, I believe it is proper that the Minnesota legislature strip him of his emergency powers and resume its proper constitutional place at the front of the line of forming the laws of the state of Minnesota, a role that us legislators have, not Governor Walz. Thank you, Madam Speaker.